I'll be darned. It actually floats. Hi, I'm Paul, and this is the Timberwalkers channel. This is the plywood boat that I built, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built it. I do want to stress to you that I am not a carpenter. I am not a boat builder, and this video is offered for entertainment purposes only. And if you have any interest in building your own boat, I would advise you to uh, get professional guidance uh, using a set of professionally drawn plans and follow them in detail. That being said, here goes. My goal is to build a simple, inexpensive, one-person boat using off-the-shelf building materials from my local home center. I don't have a shop, so I'll just be using hand tools like my circular saw, jigsaw, uh, hand drill. And uh, for my basic uh, skin of the boat, I've got a sheet of this quarter inch exterior plywood. I'll be using some half inch plywood for the ribs and I'll show each step of the process as we go along. Uh, my dimensions are going to be limited by the 8 foot sheet of plywood. So I've set that constraint. There are ways you can make it longer, but it certainly complicates things. This is going to be a flat bottom boat, and my first step is to cut the bottom piece out of my quarter inch plywood. And that should leave me enough material to for the sides, two side pieces that will be maybe 10-12 inches tall. So I'm going to get started trying to lay out how I want to cut that first piece. I've used the highly scientific method of sitting on the board and eyeballing it to try and figure out the basic shape of the bottom piece. I'm going to make it flat in the back just so I've got a little bit longer span of the wide area of the boat rather than trying to taper it back dramatically um, to stay within the eight feet and have a point at the back. Here are the two side pieces. I made them 11 inches tall and uh, had to make sure I cut the angle in front so that the exterior portion of the plywood, exterior side of the plywood would be on the water side of the boat, so to speak. Now, of course, since I started out with an 8-foot length of plywood and cut the sides in a curve, the side of the boat is actually longer than 8 foot, measuring the perimeter, so to speak. So somehow I'm going to have to figure out how to extend the side pieces to make them long enough to go all the way down the side that bridge when I come to it. So I've got a brace in the front to hold the bow together and the uh, sides are just screwed in. And then this is the first mid rib and I'll do at least two or three more of those going down the length of the boat. Okay, I've got the second rib in and it's beginning to take shape. Don't think I need to tell you this is not a case of precision engineering by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm hoping that uh, ample putty, caulk, sanding, trimming, and ultimately a fiberglass shell around that bottom and possibly the sides as well will kind of mask a lot of the imperfections. Okay, so as you can see, my plywood sides don't go all the way down. So I'm going to cut them off right here at this rib, like I've done on this side. And then put a, butt up a second rib right up next to it. And 
put a second piece of plywood all the way back to the rear. So I've got another rib cut and I'm just going to butt it up against the existing rib. Anyway, that second rib will give me a place to attach my last sheet of plywood to go down the end side and connect to the transom piece in the back, which I'm going to use this piece, uh, this little scrap piece of treated plywood, I think it's half inch that I had. One of the ways I'm keeping costs down is uh, I'm using a lot of scraps that I had uh, in the shed from other projects. And there's my transom piece and I'm going to angle cut the bottom so that the transom will angle out. My transom is attached and as soon as I did that I realized I will need another rib butted up against the transom so I'll have enough width to be able to attach the plywood sheet that's going to fill in that gap. And now I've got the rib connected to the transom. Did I mention that I'm not an expert carpenter and that it's looking a little rough? <laughs> so at this point I'm just sanding and trimming, trying to smooth things up. I've got some uh, pretty big gaps in places that I may have to put in some braces to pull those sheets together. I also wanted to note that I'm using these screws. These are exterior screws I could use for a deck to uh, hold the plywood to the uh, braces. So that's what's holding everything together. I'm putting a little bit of glue here and there, but I'm not re being very systematic about it. gotten some initial trimming and sanding done. I added a rail down each side. Just a little trim piece, but it actually adds quite a bit of strength to the boat just having that side rail. I picked up some caulk that I'm going to use for all the inside seams and then I picked up a can of Bondo which I'll use for uh, covering up all the seams on the outside, covering over screw holes, trying to smooth things out, fill in gaps. I've now got a uh, rough coat of application of Bondo on seams and gaps and covering screws and flaws etc. I've got caulk applied to the seams on the inside. So, coming along. I have very little experience with fiberglass, so I strongly encourage you not to follow my example, but the idea here is to cover the bottom and the seams of the boat with the fiberglass cloth and the fiberglass resin. I've used three 2x8 sheets of fiberglass cloth that I have pieced together to cover the bottom. Applying fiberglass is messy, there are lots of fumes, it's just generally not a fun time, especially for someone uh, inexperienced like me. I'm awfully glad I'm not shooting in HD because the flaws in my process would be even more apparent, but the uh, nice thing is that it does add a tremendous amount of strength to the boat. So. Next step will be some sanding, and then hopefully we're getting closer to a stage where I can get some paint on it. I've got my first coat of paint on the inside, and obviously I'm going to need somewhere to sit. 
I happen to have this old boat seat and I just need some way to mount it. And these will be my braces to uh, mount the seat on. I basically took a wild guess as far as where to p place the seat. The height obviously is going to affect stability and the front to back position will affect how it rides in the water so that may need to be adjusted after I take it for a test ride. I should also note that this boat is going to be used in only calm, flat waters, shallow waters, and is going to be stored under a shelter, uh, which hopefully will help it last a little bit longer. I had made this little cart for a different boat, but it makes it a whole lot easier to move around.